Hi class, I'm Dr. April Strong, and in today's video, what we are going to explore is how to use the derivative of natural log of x. And in my last video, we derived that rule for natural log x's derivative, and we found that the derivative of natural log of x is in fact 1 over x. But something to point out for all of us here is that when I have an argument in my derivative of that natural log x that's different than just a nice little easy x, I have to make sure that my answer, when I actually put it in the form of the derivative, also matches. So just a heads up about that, this is gonna play a factor in my next example. So here we go, I have this example here, y equals five times natural log x plus natural log of five x. Okay, so I think about this first, I have two parts to this, so I'm gonna tackle part one and find its derivative. Well, it turns out the five that's already in front here is just a constant multiple. So you don't need to find its derivative. Via the constant multiple rule, we are allowed to just bring that five down and keep it in front of my derivative. So I'm gonna find dy dx, and notice I'm now gonna use, because I started with a y here, I'm gonna go ahead and use um, this notation dy over dx instead of y prime. I could have used y prime if I wanted to, but I'm going to try this and showcase this notation. So dy over dx, it means the same thing as y prime or f prime of x. So let's see, we're going to have here equal to bring down my constant multiple of 5. Now I have this part, natural log x. Well, we already know the derivative of natural log x is just straight up 1 over x. So I'm trying to find the derivative of natural log x. That piece is simply 1 over x. So I'm done finding the derivative, actually, of my first section, my first term there. Now I'm going to add to it and now work on finding the derivative of natural log of 5x. Okay, well here I've got a composition of functions again. Again, I'm going to have to use the chain rule, which tells me I'm going to have to find the derivative of this outside function, which of course is natural log x, and then ultimately multiply it by the derivative of this argument, this inside function 5x. So I return back over here as a reminder to my rule, derivative of natural log x is 1 over x. Here, however, I don't just have an x, I have a 5x. So those have to match. Whatever your argument is here needs to go in the denominator when you actually write your form 1 over x. So I'll say plus 1 over 5x will go in the denominator. And again, because I have to use the chain rule, I'm going to now multiply that by my 5x's derivative. I'm going to go ahead and just put that there so it's easy to see. I'm not going to do too much in one step. I think in my next step, I can clean this up a smidgen and I can say dy over dx is equal to here, by the way, I can actually just write that is one fraction, five over x. So let's tackle that, simplify it a bit. Just a reminder, that's really five over one in order to allow us to write that as five over x. And then I'm gonna to add to it over here, of course I had one over five x, the derivative of the inside function five x is just five. And now I have this. Well, it turns out when I multiply these two functions together, the five in the numerator, because that's technically over one, the five in the numerator here divides out with the five in the denominator here, leaving me now with just dy over dx equals five over x plus, in this case, one over x. And if you really want to keep simplifying, you notice hopefully that you've got the same denominator here. They both contain an x, no biggie. I can now go ahead and add those two fractions together to have my final result of dy over dx equal to 6 over x. And there is my derivative for this original function of y equals 5 natural log x plus natural log 5x. In my next video, I'll show you another example of how to use the derivative for natural log x.